The Grey Dwarfs in Valheim are some of the most iconic hostile mobs in the game. They resemble twisted trees with wooden-like structures as limbs and foliage for camouflage with piercing glowing eyes. It might not be surprising to reveal that they are very mysterious creatures and their origins are not fully known in the Valheim realm. However, there are parts of this story that we do know and I'm here to tell you just that. Let's step back and take a look at their account from the rune stones that you can find around the map. Let all who read me beware of the Grey Dwarfs, the skulkers in darkness, the soulless ones. They are born from rot and rainfall. They spring like mushrooms from the smoking soil. There is nothing on their tongue or behind their eyes. Those who fear nothing should still fear them. When the soul of a murderer or a great sinner rots under the ground, it makes a hollow cyst which draws rock and wood and moss to it. It gathers up the peat into flesh, braids reeds into bone and takes rags for skin. It should not walk, but when the night comes, it walks. Should you who read this see one with a sword to your hand, lance it and let it out, or put it to the flame, the torch, for a fears this flame. This at least provides us some information as to how the Grey Dwarfs are reproduced or born. They seem to be born from rot and rainfall, essentially describing the growth of these being similar to plants and mushrooms, which makes sense based on their appearance. It also seems likely that they do have some sort of soul or a spirit, as the runestone tells us. That the souls of murderers and sinners who are buried form cysts in the ground, which essentially help to animate the rocks and the flora around it. So it seems evident that grey dwarfs are grown, possibly like plant life, and may take some time for their forms to truly develop before they emerge as mature grey dwarfs. Which would make sense. However, there is a flaw in this theory. Graylings. Graylings are smaller grey dwarfs and are assumed to be the spawn or the younger variant of the grey dwarf mob. This implies that grey dwarfs are not fully mature once they emerge from the ground and require some time to develop into their adult form. Also note that there are four main forms of the current grey dwarf. The Greyling, the Grey Dwarf, the Brute and the Shaman that suggests that mature Grey Dwarfs that have existed for quite some time possibly evolve into either Brutes or Shamans. Or maybe there's a hierarchy and the Brutes and the Shamans are the captains of these colonies of creatures. Little is actually known about this, so I won't discuss this any further. To get a better understanding of Grey Dwarfs, we may need to look outside of the game and look at Norse mythology. Dwarfs exist in Norse tale. Unlike our modern depictions of dwarfs, there is no evidence in these tales that they are small. Dwarfs were not described as short or stout beings. Instead, they are considered lesser, and so some may have warped this into short, dwarf-like creatures, which would make sense. The dwarfs described in Nordic tale are highly knowledgeable, very wise and extremely skilled and magically powerful creatures. The four dwarfs described were the Ostri, the Vestri, the Nordri and the Sudri, East, West, North and Southern dwarfs. These dwarfs hold the sky aloft by its four corners, a testament to their incredible strength. This obviously doesn't seem to be what is present in Valheim, but there are some uncanny similarities. It's possible that grey dwarfs are another subspecies of these dwarfs described in the Nordic tales, but it's more likely that grey dwarfs are just Iron Gate's own take on the Nordic universe. Let's dive a little deeper. Grey dwarfs spawn in groups or packs, which can be found throughout much of Valheim, especially after the first boss is killed. However, they are mostly a presence in their largest numbers in black forests, which can be found around Valheim. The black forests also contain dwarf nests, which spawn many types of these creatures. It could be assumed, therefore, that black forests serve as strongholds or 
outposts for these Grey Dwarf armies. There is even often partially ruined structures that contain some Grey Dwarf groups in the Black Forests, often with chests and barrels of some description. This suggests that the Grey Dwarf creatures do have some ability to organise and mobilise into semi-sophisticated groupings or squadrons. With the various scouting groups you can find throughout the map, they are even found scouting in meadows, seemingly searching for players to hunt down and kill. Their ability to mobilise into groups and scouting parties suggests that they do have a semi-lucid goal or at least a motive of some description. This isn't clear and definitely isn't canon, but it seems likely as there seems to be some purpose in the structure of their armies. And that's what you could call them, armies. There is that many of them and they seem to be that widespread so it actually feels relatively safe to call Grey Dwarfs an army or a legion of some description. But again, this isn't canon and only serves as a better analogy to the structure of their kind. We also know that Odin, after defeating his foes, locked away his defeated enemies in Valheim. Obviously, it seems that some of these formerly defeated foes were able to rise up and escape into the woodlands, swamps and plains of Valheim. Therefore, it could be a possibility that Greydorfs do have some sort of allegiance or are influenced by some of the various bosses in the game, as Greydorfs are not aggressive or harmed by the attacks of the first two bosses. Greydorfs are also non-aggressive to trolls, suggesting some sort of positive or mutual relationship between Grey Dwarfs and Troll armies. They also seem completely uninterested in the local passive fauna in the game, not attacking boars or deers in the meadows. Based on all of this information discussed, it seems likely that the origins of the Grey Dwarf stem back to the explanation in the runestone, old souls or spirit energy used to animate the flora and ground into a new type of mythical creature. The purposes of this creature is not known, but it is likely that they're used as the ground soldiers for a bigger plan for Valheim, such as the grunts of an army, sought to finally oust Odin and escape the Valheim realm into the other realms of the Nordic universe. There does seem to be some sort of motive, but this is just my theory based on the evidence presented to us. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this Valheim lore video. Thank you very much for watching.